So the subject this morning that we are reflecting on together is the will of God. What does it mean when we say we desire to be living in the will of God? What do we mean when we use this expression? I am so glad we are talking about this today, Pastor Barbara, because I find this so confusing at times. I hear the phrase, will of God. It's used to describe things that have happened. Sometimes those things are difficult. Sometimes they're good things. Oh, okay, you mean like, it's the will of God that someone live or die because that's part of some bigger picture of some kind. Yeah. That. Um, I also hear it used when someone is sure they have made the right decision about something or they are trying to make a decision and they want to be sure they make the right one. Okay, like this. I know this job is God's will for my life or I am praying to see if it's God's will that I marry this person, things like that. Yes, again. But there are also times when the phrase seems to be referring to something bigger, something special, more general things, like God's will be done on earth, or as a nation, and things like that. I really do wonder what we mean when we use this expression. Well, let's start with that last uh, idea first. Sometimes the phrase, the will of God, is used to talk about the big picture, a vision God has for the whole of creation or for all of humanity. What is that line from the Lord's Prayer, Karen, that summarizes this so beautifully? I think it's your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Exactly. There's a reference to the idea that God's will is to have the kingdom come on the whole earth. This is a, a big picture, a vision, a hope for all of creation. This is God seeing what is possible. Maybe another way to say this that I like very much is this is God's vision for the full potential of creation. And we're all invited to participate in that. We're encouraged. Maybe sometimes we're even pushed a little bit towards that vision. Pushed. Now, can you think of any times in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, where God pretty much just tells people what they're going to do and they don't have any choice in the matter? There's lots of examples. Yeah. Moses comes to mind. Yep. Jonah, who tried to run away from God, but God pursued him. Uh, there's Noah, and there's many prophets who, you know, they didn't really want to be prophets, but they were called by God, and that was God's will, in a sense. Yes, uh, you're on the right track, and there are many examples. Now, how about in the New Testament? Yes, um, there's Mary, Jesus' mother, and Joseph, Jesus' father. They were used by God in a very specific way that they didn't choose for themselves. And Paul, the apostle, he sure had his life turned upside down. True. He had been persecuting Christians, and then he became one of their greatest leaders. Yes, and he makes a point of reminding people about that transformation in his life. In every one of his letters somewhere, he says something like this, I, Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God. He says very plainly, this is God's will for me. I did not choose it for myself. And that doesn't mean that Paul or anybody else is unhappy in those spaces. It simply implies that their life couldn't look any other way and that this is God's doing. So what I want us to see is that there is a biblical precedent to see God, well, let's say, pushing people uh, to do certain things or live a certain way so that God's bigger vision will be moved forward, that big picture. They don't seem to have much choice in the matter. You could say, though, that they're being pushed to their fullest personal potential. But there is an example with Jesus that I'm thinking of when he was praying in the garden before he was arrested, when uh, he also spoke of God's will. Can you remind us of that, please? Of course. Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. So here Jesus is clearly saying, I really do not want to do this, but I will do your will. So this suggests that there really is a choice that Jesus is making, that there's something quite specific that God wants to have happen, but Jesus could also choose yes or no. And of course we know he chooses to follow God's will. So I'm starting to see that in general, God's will could be seen as God's desire or God's intention. Sometimes it is quite specific and personal. Sometimes 
people may feel they have a choice and sometimes they don't. That's all good, but I want us to look at this one other way, because there are many passages in the New Testament, in the letters, when there is general wisdom offered about the will of God in the lives of individuals. The New Testament makes references to this way in which the will of God is essentially shared by the whole community, but is chosen and enacted by individuals. In Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, he describes God's will this way. That letter says, admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all. Never repay evil with evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So there's that phrase, this is the will of God. And the intention here is directed to everyone. This is how you should behave. The particulars are up to you. Now, there is one more reference uh, in a letter from Paul, this one in this letter to the church in Rome, that I think adds a little more insight to this idea of our personal choices. In that letter, Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So here, Paul, if you look at that, is reminding Jesus' followers that following the ways of the world can kind of interfere with and take you off course for your own personal transformation, for living into your own potential, which includes, and I really like this, the renewing of your mind. Uh, don't be thrown by this idea about perfect that you see up here. Remember that you could translate this as whole or complete, or my word, my expression for today is full potential. So you could say that last section this way. You are capable with your own mind of discerning what is good and acceptable and what uses your full potential. This, Karen, this I think is God's will for us that every single person live into their full potential. Every single person lives into their full potential. God already sees us as whole. God knows what is possible in our lives, but God isn't micromanaging every decision. Rather, God's presence strengthens us, urges us, invites us, maybe sometimes tugs on us in all sorts of ways so that we live into the fullness of who we are. Now, one of the things I want to mention to you all this morning is that what I've put forth and what you've seen in all the picture images is the difference between jigsaw puzzles and beautiful mosaic art. And I want to raise the question, how do we think of God's will in our lives? Is it more like you're working a jigsaw puzzle or making a mosaic? Now, if we have a microphone someplace, I'm going to ask Barb Haynes to come up here. Would you join me, please, Barb? And Barb, who's going to have her knee replaced on Tuesday, Barb is somebody who loves to work jigsaw puzzles. Sometimes she works those 2,500 piece jigsaw puzzles, but she is also the artist who created these beautiful mosaic pieces you see up here this morning. So thank you for sharing your art with us. Now I wanna ask you a question first about jigsaw puzzles. Why do you enjoy doing jigsaw puzzles? Well, jigsaw puzzles are, I find, very relaxing because the picture's there, you don't have to think about really what you're doing, and everything has a little place. So it's, it's simple. And how do you go about working a jigsaw puzzle? You've got to put the frame in first. Frame first. And then I usually go for a color uh -huh. and work different colors and kind of bring it all in the middle then. Right. Is that how most of you work jigsaw puzzles? Right. Frame first, you have some idea, and I think most of us do use that picture on the box to be very helpful. Now I want to ask you a little bit about your mosaic art. Um, why do you enjoy doing mosaics? Well, I got into mosaics to um, use up my stained glass. I usually do stained glass, and I had all these boxes of broken glass. Broken pieces, ah. And so I started with the frame and worked, started from the corners with the color and just kind of 
used up my colors. Gotcha. So you knew sort of basically what you wanted to do, but it kind of took on a life of its own. You didn't have a full plan for what this was going to look like before you started. Not at all. And now I caught that you use broken pieces of glass. What else do you sometimes use? I use little uh, old pieces of jewelry or um, old tiles or baubles or whatever all, I have. All kinds of pieces come into your mosaic. Thank you for that and thank you for sharing your art with us this morning. You can take a seat again if you would. So let's think about this just a little bit then. Let's talk about puzzles for a second. We all know about jigsaw puzzles. There is a right way to solve a jigsaw puzzle, to put it together. There is a predetermined picture that we are trying to create and there's an exact number of pieces already cut out for you. So your task with a jigsaw puzzle is to figure out where each piece goes. And there might be more than one way that you go about figuring that out. It was interesting watching the kids up here collaborate to do that. There may be more than one way to assemble those pieces, but there's only one right outcome. So if we think about the will of God in this way, then the will of God is sort of like solving a puzzle. It's satisfying, but only because you know and if you know how it's supposed to look. So is your understanding of the will of God in your life a bit like solving a jigsaw puzzle, but without being able to see the cover because you don't actually know what the picture is supposed to look like? Maybe that sort of informs your own understanding. Maybe that resonates with you. But let's talk about mosaics for a minute. As Barb was describing, with a mosaic, there's a general idea of what you're trying to create, but there's really no single right answer. There's no real mistakes, as you put it together. There's many variations, big and little, on how a mosaic is going to turn out, even if you're given a specific number of pieces and kinds of tile and glass and things to work with. A mosaic is a creative process, even if you have some idea about how you want it to turn out. So is life in God's will for you a little bit more like making a mosaic where you have tools and supplies and maybe instructions to work with, but you uh, have to exercise your own creativity in order to produce anything at all? Is that more like your view of living in the will of God? Well, anyone who knows me knows that I have a pretty low tolerance for folks who say that everything happens for a reason, or God is the cause of all things in this life in order to teach us lessons and bring us close or exactly to where God wants us to be. I'm not one to ever believe that there is only one right path, one good choice, one God-directed outcome for every situation. There are billions of moments that form this single moment right here in this place, and God is present in every single moment, but God is not micromanaging those moments in our lives. There's a huge difference there. I think God is giving us both the freedom and the responsibility to create our lives out of the choices of what fills our lives. And in that process with God, we live into the fullness of our potential. Remember, God already sees us in fullness. God's vision for us brings us into reality of what might be possible in how we participate in bringing the kingdom of God. So yes, I am very fond of this mosaic image when we talk about the will of God. But I do have to say, I believe that God also moves in the world in unexpected ways, maybe pushing, pulling, inviting us in one direction or another. And in these ways, I believe that we are perhaps co-creating with God. Some moments, some opportunities, may be openings that lead us towards the fullest potential of our lives, and we can accept or reject these gifts from God when they come. So I guess this makes me sort of a mosaic puzzle person. Our lives are like mosaics that we create out of the many pieces in our lives, but maybe our lives are like mosaics that include puzzle pieces that have something to tell us about how God sees us. Our choices of how we put our lives together may be mosaic puzzle lives. Uh, if you remember and are looking at your bulletin cover or the picture up here, Jeff found this 
It's a mosaic made out of puzzle pieces. A mosaic made out of puzzle pieces. That's what I want to offer ultimately as an image, perhaps for God's will. Puzzle and mosaic doesn't have to be one or the other. Perhaps it's both and. Living in the will of God may be making something beautiful, making some beautiful mosaic out of all the pieces, including the puzzle pieces of our lives. May that be so. Amen.